is going to tell us whether we should leave the leaves on our planting bed or not do that. Thanks, Shirley, I appreciate that intro. Um, if you could go back to my title slide really quickly. Okay. Thank you, that's, or either of those two slides is perfect. Okay. Um, thank you so much. So um, I think this is a particularly timely subject. You know, these leaves are starting to fall in our region. And so lots of us are contemplating our fall yard cleanup. And I really think that this presentation, the you know sequence of presentations we've had tonight are, very fitting, you know, we're thinking forward to the spring already as we're seeing the end of this season and all the wonderful trees that Samantha told us how to plant um, are dropping leaves. So, and they all feed back into the cycle of gardening. So this is kind of a, this whole presentation, you know, I appreciate all of Samantha's uh, kind of philosophical and spiritual approaches to gardening. And I think this kind of continues that subject um, because this is senescence. This is, you know, things going back into the earth and then we'll have regrowth and reemergence in the spring. So anyway, I won't get too philosophical going forward. And I know we have a very short amount of time. So if you don't mind saving your questions for me until the end or put them in the chat, if you don't want to forget, that way I can get through my material in a timely fashion, that would be great. So the slide that um, is showing right now, and, and I kind of went on a deep dive as I was researching this subject, um, each year, 461,579 tons of yard waste are disposed of in Virginia. And that's statewide. You can uh, view this report. This is a solid waste report uh, on the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality. And, you know, looking across this table, I know it might be hard to see in the slide, you know, about 429,000 tons are composted or recycled. And, you know, if we live, if you live in Alexandria, you know that, like I do, there are great resources. You can get free mulch. The county offers it to residents. So they're making an, an effort to, you know, reuse this material that's uh, disposed of. But that still means that nearly 33,000 tons of yard waste is just sent to the landfill. And this is a uh, in my opinion, kind of a tragedy because all of that organic matter should be going back into the, the soil that, you know, we talked a lot about soil quality and soil tests and things like that. And a lot of that compaction and uh, de degradation of soil quality is because there isn't a lot of organic matter that's going back into it. So many of you also might be aware that Fairfax County recently banned the use of plastic bags in their uh, soil, or I'm sorry, yard waste collection. And that's because these materials, when they shred the mulch, the plastic was going back into the mulch and that was getting you know, put back into our soil, which is a whole a problem for a whole other presentation. I'm not here to discuss how big a problem we have with plastic, but anyway, know that it's harmful and these paper bags at least are some help. So if you could go to my next slide, please. So, I think I kind of spoiled the question when I started out. Um, leave the leaves or not, obviously. I think fairly obviously I am going to advocate strongly for leaving the leaves. And that's because all kinds of life and creatures live in these habitats. Leaves are really, really important. So if you want to, you know, get in there and see what's living there. Frogs, snakes, salamanders, caterpillars, butterfly and moth pupae overwinter in fallen leaves. Um, in my neighborhood, there are about seven zillion Isabella tiger moth caterpillars, otherwise known as woolly bears, and I'll show you a picture of those later. They're the uh, black and brown striped ones. They're really cute. As kids, we were fascinated with them. They're all everywhere. They're trying to find their winter homes. Um, there are beetles, there are spiders, and crickets. You know, there are crickets everywhere this time of year also. And, you know, everything down to fly larvae, um, which are maggots, and, um, you know, creatures like this five-line skink, which is a super interesting um, animal that lives in Virginia, that's native to Virginia. They live in moist forested areas where there are plenty of places to hide. I see some in rock crevices near my house and piles of wood and leaf litter. So, if you don't have leaves, you're not gonna have these really cool um, animals that will help control bug populations in your garden. Next slide, please. So every year leaves fall, tons of leaves fall, and every year they're just magically gone. And you know, you ever wonder 
how that happens or or think about it year to year and that's because there are all kinds of you know yucky bugs that you know we think of as like ew gross there are worms there are millipedes um mites nematodes wood lice pill bugs all kinds of those creepy crawly bugs live in the leaves and eat them and break them down there are also bacteria and fungi that work to break down these leaves every year and that create that nice rich dark soil that all of us gardeners so desperately want so leave the leaves and you guys are going to have like a you know shortcut in the spring to you know good quality soil and especially if you do it year over year these insects also, all of these detrivores, as they're known, they eat dead material, are important parts of the food web. So you know, birds and larger insects feed on them and they kind of support you know, the food web going up. Next slide, please. So if you'd like to, um, I have a little inner, very minor interactive uh, exercise. So when I think, when you think of millipedes and pill bugs and spiders and snakes and things like that. What words come to mind if you want to put that in the chat? What's your first reaction? Uh, I know that when I was reading about this, I was like, ew, maggots. Like it's, it's a universal human, you know, disgust reaction, right? You're like, it. But that's really important. So if you go to my next slide, um, we think of these insects as maybe creepy or scary, but like I said, they're a critical part of the food web. And if they weren't there, uh, Steve said biodiversity. Thanks, Steve. That's a, a positive reaction. That's really good. Um, I just know, you know, I work with a lot of, it's a lot of my coworkers are like, ew, a spider, ew, a snake. Um, so maybe it's just the group that I interact with on a regular basis. But if you go to my next slide, so this is a photo, this beautiful photo. I'm pretty proud of this one. I took this, I snapped this with my phone in my yard. This is a hoverfly. And if I don't leave leaves in my yard, I'm not going to have, where the maggots for this hoverfly can live, I'm not going to have these beautiful insects, you know, pollinating my flowers. They're really important. They're really cool. I did a presentation on them earlier this year, learned a lot about them. They're like helicopter insects. They can fly forward, backwards, up and down. It's really, really cool. And then um, on the right, like I said, here's one of the woolly bears. This was in my driveway. And so I scooped him up on those leaves put them in a safer spot, trying to find a place to overwinter. So I just, you know, there's a lot of biodiversity, as Steve said, that's a great way to look at it in our leaf litter. Next slide, please. So I, this photo made me laugh. This is from the um, Xerxes Society, and they are a great advocate for invertebrates. And there are and on my resources slide, I hope you will visit a couple of their web pages because they have really good articles about why you should leave leaves, what they, you know, a, a longer overview than I can do in, in this brief time with you. Um, so I'm not saying that you have to let your car be buried under leaves every season. Um, you know, you can move leaves to different spots in your yard, but having some layers of leaf litter around is going to be really helpful. So you can add these to your garden beds. I like to rake up my leaves and just I don't have many trees. I'm going to take a lot of Samantha's advice to heart and plant a lot more in my yard because I want to have a more wooded area. But I scoop up all the leaves and put them in my garden bed. If you have a vegetable garden, you can put them on top of the soil um, for the winter. You can, if you have a corner of your yard where you know you don't really need it to be mowed or perfectly pristine, you know, pile them in the corner and you know critters can overwinter in there. And then in the spring, you can. You know, if the leaves, if you don't want to leave them on the top of the bed or you want them to break down even further, you can add them to compost piles or dig them into your beds. But I will say one note, and this goes back to what Patrick presented on early, is we want to wait to do that until it's warm. We had a couple of those really beautiful warm spring days and insects are out and buzzing around so that anybody who's still sleeping doesn't get tilled into your garden by accident. In my experience, you know, these leaves break down on their own and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go back and, you know, take them off my gardens or anything like that. They just kind of, you know, year over year break down into the soil. Um, and one other note, when you're moving the leaves, try to use manual um, tools if you can. A, you can use a blower, but if you use anything that vacuums them up or a lawnmower that shreds them, again, that's going to harm creatures that might be living in those. Um, so if you stay on this slide, like I said, this is the Xerxes Society. Um, this was one of the articles that I read as a reference for this. And I just wanted to include a snapshot of it because I thought it was really, it, it was really that great. Um, 
this is a really like, you know, 15 page comprehensive free PDF that you can download. And I liked that they noted that you don't have to turn your whole yard into a perfectly pristine natural space. You can have a couple, you can have a lawn if you, you know, have kids or you want space to play. I have a dog that needs space to run around, but you can still have some of those wild areas at the margins if you're willing to make space for it. Next slide, please. These are a couple other resources, um, a campaign from the Xerxes Society, Leaves Are Not Litter, hashtag leave the leaves if you want to be active on social media. And then the Grow Native program. This is part of the Missouri Prairie Foundation and their mission is to help protect and restore biodiversity by increasing conservation awareness of native plants and their effective use in urban, suburban and developed landscapes. So I thought that was really cool. They have, again, great resources on their webpage. Next slide, please. And then some of you might have come across this article. It's from 2018. And, and I just want to drive home, like, I think probably I'm preaching to the choir. If you're in a gardening podcast, hopefully you already appreciate the insects living in our world. But we have seen a very uh, staggering drop in the number of insects and the biodiversity that we see. Um, in 2018, they cited... Um, that monarch, the population of monarch butterflies has fallen by 90% over the past 20 years, which is a loss of 900 million monarch butterflies. And that's one species. And that's, you know, there are all these save the monarchs, plant milkweed, all these uh, great campaigns that are very valid and really important to save those insects. Um, so certainly not trying to uh, say that we shouldn't save the monarchs, but there are gazillions of other insect species across the our country and around the world that are also experiencing great declines and we don't have the eyesight on these statistics the way that we are tracking the monarch population and it's hard to advocate for you know beetles and crawly creepy crawly things in the leaves because they're not as pretty you know monarch sits on a flower and it's a beautiful photo but people are not quite as excited about millipedes so i thought this article was a really sobering call to action um, and is worth a read if you're interested and one last thing I'll say before I close, and again, I know I'm sorry I've talked for a long time and we're running over, and this is what I learned. I love birds. I've grown up loving birds and wanted to have a bird-friendly yard, and invariably, if you read about how to have a wild, wildlife-friendly yard, it brings you back to bugs because that is the foundation of the food web. So if you like common yellow throats, juncos, sparrows, towhees, you know, you see towhees in the leaves um, digging for insects and things like that. Mockingbirds, thrashers, blue jays, thrushes, quails, pheasants, and, you know, turkeys if you're lucky to live in the rural area like some of us. Um, the leaf litter is really important and the things that live in it support those birds. So I think that is everything that I am able to cover. I know I've already kept you over time, but the next two slides are references. And, and these are really really good reads. Um, and I liked, I included this opinion page from the Washington Post. It's a little bit older too, but um, lawns are a soul crushing time suck and most of us would be better off without them. I thought that was really funny. Why mow when you can have a garden instead? Um, and then the next page includes a link to uh, the Fairfax County Department of Public Works information about how they switched over to paper, as well as the Department of Environmental Quality solid waste report, which is kind of interesting and sober in reading if you want to look at how much waste we're producing every year. And then of course the New York Times article and um, another great and comprehensive article about life in the fallen leaves from the Loudoun Wildlife Conserv Conservancy. Um, and so I see Simon put a question in the chat here about the difference between soft leaves like oak and maple that would break down and hard leaves like southern magnolia. And I think that's a, a great question. Um, Magnol those big southern magnolia leaves are don't break down as readily. So I think that's another one. If you have a corner of your yard where you want to get those off your, your lawn or, um, you know, my neighbor has one right in front of his house. So I understand he doesn't want to big pile of leaves right in his front yard, but maybe put those in a back corner or a compost um, pile where they can break down a little bit, you know, over time and, and take their time to decompose. I, I don't have any, I don't have a question. But I, I cannot tell you how your uh, presentation, like uh, Patrick's and Samantha, has resonated, have resonated with me. Um, 
sitting here tonight, I, I am a converted person. I once believed, before I became a, an intern, that the most beautiful yard was perfectly devoid of uh, undercover, ground cover, had all turf grass, and that you hired the, the uh, lawn crews to come in and you paid them hundreds and hundreds of dollars to blow all your leaves out in the street. That was beauty. Until I learned what you are reinforcing tonight, that that's not beauty. And that's not the way. <laughs> now I see it the other way around. Now I'm actually collecting leaves. I had a bag left on my front, uh, my front lawn from a neighbor. And uh, I'm saving over $500 a year now from not having to, the people come in to blow the leaves off and then add to the tens of thousands of tons, whatever it was, of uh, trash. And I have a higher quality mulch and I have my natural habitat beginning to take, take form. So, um, bravo.